Right, so we've got this video here of Gary, how to find hammered coins. And basically it's a nice long video of him uh, talking about exactly how you find hammered coins. I got a question last night, how do I find hammered, silver hammered and gold coins? Well, gold coins is a bit more tricky, but when you find hammered coins, you might find gold ones. So, um, so Gary chats away in this video about how to find hammered coins and the sorts of land you need to look for. So what I do is I will, see it says share there, I'll press that and I will copy his video. Now what he's doing, it's not copying his video, it's just copying the transcript of his video. So we're not copying his video with all his, you know, not, breach, not massively breaching any copyright here. Not that it would because it, it gets completely converted. So let's go over to notebook lm and i'll show you what what it does so what i've done here is i've already done it and made the video here so you could play eight minutes 57 minutes long so i downloaded this one um and what it does if you click here uh, delete delete you can generate a new one each time which is amazing and it's completely different each time which is really good so you get a completely different podcast each time you click generate now to bring it up from the beginning you know, upload source right so I just click on this little cross up here upload source so you can upload a website you can upload a YouTube video which is what I'm about to do Google Docs Google Slides copy text you can do PDF documents um, markdown whatever that is and you can upload audio files as well so I've clicked on YouTube and you get the YouTube link right there so I've put in the YouTube link already and I've generated a piece of audio which I'm going to play now over the top of this because um, I've already generated it if you click generate it will generate it again and again and again and again or different each time which is just amazing so you're ready to dig into history huh mm. find your very first hammered coin that's awesome i get it though it can seem like wow where do i even start there's so much out there but don't worry that's what we're here for right today we're diving into a video it's from the skill school they've got this awesome channel run by a detectorist seriously years of experience and he drops some seriously good tips especially because get this it took him a whole year to find his first hammered coin yeah can you believe that a whole year talk about patience right it definitely proves a point you know patience the right strategies that's the key it's easy to get caught up in that initial excitement you get a metal detector and you think boom uh, instant treasure but it's not quite like that no definitely not instant one thing that really hit home for me in the video was how he debunks that whole mystery signal thing. You know how some people think hammered coins have like this unique signature on a metal detector? He's like, nope, not really. Sure. He says, if you're finding those tiny metal bits, foil, pellets, things like that, you're probably in the right spot. It's all about having the right gear to actually pick those coins out. Absolutely. And the good news is modern detectors are a game changer, especially those with higher frequencies like 14 kilohertz and up. They're way better at finding those teeny ancient coins. So it's like having a superpower. Kind of. Think of it this way. Higher frequency. It's like your detector can see in much finer detail. Those subtle differences in the metal that older models missed. You're picking those up now. That's amazing. So you're not just out there like hoping for a lucky beep anymore. You've got technology on your side. Exactly. But, and he's really clear about this, don't just rely on those coin modes. A lot of detectors have them, right? Yeah, they're supposed to filter out the junk, right? Right, they are, but here's the thing. They can actually mistake hammered coins for trash just because of their size and the type of metal. It's like, mm -hmm. hmm, like accidentally donating a valuable antique, you know? You thought it was just some old thing. Well, that's devastating. Yeah. So how do you avoid doing that? How do you make sure you don't make that mistake? It comes down to understanding your metal detector, really understanding its settings. You don't need to be like a tech whiz or anything, but even just a basic understanding of how it processes signals, huge difference. So it's like knowing the rules of the road before you just hit the gas. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it really is. And technique plays a huge role too. He talks about like keeping your coil close to the ground, mm. right? And adjusting your sweep speed depending on the terrain. Yeah, yeah. 
He really stresses that. Like, it's not just waving the detector around like a wand. No, no, not at all. It's more like, hmm, imagine trying to find something really tiny, like a contact lens, but it's in a really thick carpet. You're not just going to, like, run your hand over the top, are you? No way. You'd be down there close, moving slow, really feeling around. It's kind of like that with metal detecting. Makes sense. Oh. And then there's location, of course. You could have the best detector in the world, perfect technique, all of that. Hmm. But if you're in the wrong spot. You're going to have a tough time. It's like fishing, right? You wouldn't go to, like, a puddle and expect to catch a marlin. you got to go where the fish are. And for hammered coins, it's all about thinking like someone from way back when. Where might they have, I don't know, dropped something valuable? Right. So where are those hammered coin hotspots? Think about those places where people gathered a long time ago. Medieval villages, Roman settlements, old paths, areas near water sources. Those are all good bets. Makes sense. Those were like the hubs of activity back then, right? Exactly. Places where people lived, worked, traded, and inevitably dropped a few coins along the way. I love that. The everyday routines of people from centuries ago leading us to these hidden treasures. It's like you find a coin in one of these spots and it's like holding a piece of history in your hand. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a direct connection, you know, yeah. a real tangible reminder that history isn't just like in the books. It's all around us, yeah. just waiting to be discovered. And, you know, sometimes the most unexpected places can be the most rewarding. Which reminds me, he mentions this technique called field walking. Field walking. Tell me more. It's actually pretty cool. It's all about like before you even turn your detector on, you're just observing the ground, looking for any visual clues that might tell you about past activity in that area. Oh, interesting. So it's like being a detective at a crime scene. Exactly. You're looking for anything that might tell a story. Pottery shards, tile fragments, old bricks, even oyster shells. Oyster shells. Yeah. It could be a sign that people were there maybe gathering food or something and where there's food. Well, there might be lost coins, too. It's amazing how these little things can tell such a bigger story, you know? I found this clay pipe stem in my backyard once, and it just got me thinking, like, wow, who was smoking this thing centuries ago? Finding a hammered coin must feel like that times a thousand. Oh, absolutely. It's like each coin is this little window to the past. And finding one in an area where you've already found other artifacts, it just brings that whole picture to life even more. It's like piecing together a puzzle. Okay, so field walking is definitely going on my to-do list. But what about iron? The video talks about how it can be both a friend and a foe when you're hunting for hammered coins. Right. Iron's tricky like that. On the one hand, it's a great indicator that people were there. You find nails, tools, horseshoes, all that stuff leaves traces of iron behind. So it's like a signpost saying, hey, people were here. Dig deeper. Exactly. But, and this is the faux part, iron can be a real pain for metal detectors. It creates a lot of interference. It makes it harder to pick out those subtle hammered coin signals. It's like trying to have a conversation in a really loud room, isn't it? Yeah, it's like trying to hear someone whisper in a noisy factory. That background noise can really drown out what you're trying to focus on. And I can only imagine digging up what you think is a coin and it's another rusty nail. So how do you deal with all that iron? What's the strategy? Well, first off, knowing your detector settings is key. The YouTuber mentions something called recovery speed. Recovery speed. We've heard that term before. How does that work with iron? Okay, so recovery speed is basically how fast your detector can process multiple signals, especially when they're close together. In areas with a lot of iron, you want a faster recovery speed. That way your detector can tell the difference between like an iron signal and a coin signal. It's like having a super fast brain that can process everything quickly, even when it's chaotic. Exactly. Helps your detector pick out those faint hammered corn whispers amidst all the iron roars, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of the YouTuber, he actually demonstrates this in the video. He goes to a field that is just notorious for iron. Oh, yeah, he wasn't kidding. Yeah. He actually calls it machine gun iron at one point. Like, yeah, the sound it makes on his detector is just constant. What does he even do with that? Well, he uses it as a chance to show how to adjust the settings on your detector to deal with even the toughest conditions. He tweaks things like reactivity, sensitivity, frequency tries to find that sweet spot for detecting in those kinds of areas. It's like he's fine-tuning an instrument or something. So what did those adjustments even do? Like, what's actually happening? So 
bumping up the reactivity, that helps the detector process signals faster, which is really important when you have a lot of targets close together. Increasing the sensitivity helps pick up fainter signals that you might miss otherwise. And then experimenting with different frequencies that helps fine tune the detector's ability to tell different metals apart. It's like he's a metal detecting scientist or something. So does he find anything after all that? He does. Yeah, it takes a little time, some careful maneuvering, but then he gets this really solid signal. It just cuts right through all that iron chatter. What happens? What is it? He digs it up and it's a hammered coin, a beautiful one too. No way. What a moment, right? Oh, yeah. Just goes to show patience, persistence, having the right approach, it can pay off. Yeah. Even in those really tough conditions. Absolutely. And I love this. He even says at one point, I just love all this iron. I could work a small patch all day and not get bored. To me, this is what detecting is all about. It's like he's not even phased. That's real dedication right there. It's about the challenge, the joy of the hunt, finding something hidden for, you know, who knows how long. And that connection to the past, you just can't beat it. It's more than just the find, isn't it? So true. Well, as we wrap up our little deep dive here into the world of hammered coin hunting, what would you say is the biggest takeaway for our listeners? What should they really remember? I think the biggest thing is realizing that finding these treasures, it's not just about luck. It's about knowledge, having a good strategy, and just plain not giving up. You learn about your local history, you use the right equipment, you learn the techniques, but then you've got to put in the time. That's when you find the good stuff. Exactly. It's almost like those rusty nails. Yeah, they're frustrating, but they're like little signs, right? You're on the right track. Who knows what's waiting to be found just beneath the surface? Maybe our listeners will be the ones to unearth it. So there we have it. Um, if anyone else has some ideas of what I could do next, I'm really open to this because this is a really great technology. You know, obviously got American voices and there is some slight mistakes in what they're saying, but generally it is really, really good. Um, so yeah, if anyone else got any ideas for the next um, podcast thing I could generate, um, give me a, a shout in the comments below, give me a thumbs up, maybe a subscribe and we'll see where we can go from there.